I don't even need this. My mouth is big enough. Uh, but you got to hear it over here. Huh? Well, you can hear it over here. All right. Before I get started, um, I found Luke, out, Luke 18 by somebody I've been fighting for for three years trying to turn them over to Christ. She lives in Virginia. Angel already knows who I'm talking about. She, um, she fight for me saying, what if I change later? What if I overcome sin? I told her, you're no match. I said, only Jesus can bring you through that. That's right. And then only Jesus on, can do it. Later on in the conversation, she ended up turning her life to Christ because she, felt, she said, I have a void in me that I can't fill. She says, I feel miserable. I said, do you know what that is? She says, no. She says, I told her, it's Christ. You don't have him. And then she turned her life over to Christ. So I'm going to be... Turning in Luke 18, reading that, and I just want to say I'm proud of that girl for giving her life to Christ. And he spake a parable unto them, to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint, saying, There was a in a city a judge which feared not, nor God, nor regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterwards he said within himself, Though I fear no God, nor regard any man, yet because this widow troubled me, I will avenge her, lest by continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said, and shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily, nevertheless when the Son of Man come, shall he find faith on the earth. And he shall spake the parable unto certain which trusted in themselves, that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up into the temple to pray, and one Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as the, this republican. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess, and the publican standing far, far off would not lift up as much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to the house justified rather than the other. For every other that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbled himself shall be exalted. And they brought unto him also infants, and in that he would touch them. But when his disciples saw it, they rebuked them. But Jesus came unto them, saying, Suffer little children to come unto me, and forbid them, not for such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, whoever shall... Receive the kingdom of God as a little child show. Amen. No, in no wise enter therein. And That's a right. certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest me there thou good? None is good, save one, that is God. Thou knowest the commandments, do, do not the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear, bear false witness, honor thy father and thy mother. And he said, All these things I have kept from my youth up. Now when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, Yet lackest the one thing, so all that you hast, and distribute unto the poor, and thou shalt treasure in heaven, and then come and follow me. And when he heard this, he felt very sorrowful, for he was very rich. And when Jesus saw that he was very sorrowful, he said, How hardly shall they have riches enter the kingdom of God? For it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich man enter the kingdom of God. And they had heard it said, who then can be saved? And he said, The things which are possible with men are possible with God. Then Peter said, Lo, we have all left all and followed thee. And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house, or parents, or brother, or wife, or children, for the kingdom of God's sakes, who shall not receive manifold more in the present time and in this world to come life everlasting. And then he took unto him the twelve and said to them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and all things that are written by the prophets concerning the Son of Man shall be accomplished. For he shall be delivered unto the Gentiles, and he shall be mocked, and spitefully entreated and spit on, and they shall scourge him and put him to death. And the third day he shall rise again. And they understood none of these things that he was saying, and was hid from them. Neither did they know that the things which were spoken to them. And it came to pass that he was come nigh unto Jericho, and certain blind men sat by the wayside begging. And hearing the multitude pass, he asked what it meant, and they told him that Jesus of Nazareth passeth by. And he cried, saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And they went, and they which went before rebuked him that he should hold his peace, but he cried so much that more, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought unto him. And when he was come near, he asked him, saying, What wilt thou 
that I shall do unto thee. And he said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. And Jesus said, Jesus said unto him, Receive thy sight. Thy faith has saved thee. And immediately he received his sight and followed him, glorifying God and all the people when they saw it gave praise unto God. Now that's all that really came to mind over the weekend that I've been trying to focus on something to read. All that came to mind was Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18. I don't know if that was for any of y'all or not, but <coughs> basically when I looked up what, what does the parable of a judge and a girl mean, it said pray with God to persist. And so I'm praying that God increases this girl's faith because I'm proud of how far she's come in five days. Amen. Amen.